thank you for uh, for being here for this discussion with Agusti Viaronga, um, whose work is being shown uh, as a career retrospective here in Rotterdam, along with uh, Nathaniel Dorsky and F.J. Osang. It gives us an, a unique opportunity to see the work as a whole. And indeed, this is, this is a type of work that um, kind of exists in the margins of Spanish cinema. Uh, there's a kind of majoritarian discourse about national cinemas that happens, usually the type of cinema that's exported. Um, so in Spain, I mean, we have the kind of very typical examples. I don't even think I have to name them. And then there's always kind of a secret history of uh, certain national cinema. And within that kind of secret history, we have somebody like Agustí Villaronga, and uh, whose work we're going to explore and try to put it further into context today. Um, and uh, I'd just like to uh, maybe uh, start with just a few facts about Villaronga, in case you're, uh, you're not familiar with Agustí's work. Um, he's made seven feature films, uh, and several shorts and music videos, some commissioned, um, some original creations. Um, a lot of the themes that he deals with are related to kind of difficult and traumatic history around Spain uh, and European fascism. Um, and he also deals with these themes in a way that's, I would say, visceral and, and aesthetically uh, distinct and then a lot of the, the ways that the, they've been explored otherwise in Spanish cinema. Uh, his career starts actually in the 70s, around 1976, with the first shorts. Yep. And uh, the first feature is in 1987, and it's a very auspicious feature debut. Um, and it's a cult film called Tras el Cristal. And this is a film that a director starts with this film, and even your subsequent film, El Niño de la Luna. And, uh, and these, are, these are films that get a lot of attention um, and announce a major artist working within the national cinema. And, uh, and that presents difficulties as well. Uh, in fact, maybe it's even a tradition in Spanish cinema. You have these directors like Victor Erice and Jose Luis Guerin who start very strong with works that are immediately lauded as, uh, as some of the best. Uh, and, and then how do you follow that? So we want to talk about that too uh, in this chat and, uh, and, and how um, how you think that audiences are beginning to uh, exactly. become into uh, your work? Uh, no, I haven't asked a question yet. <laughs> we'll get there. I'd, I'd like to maybe just uh, start um, with, with, with that question. I know it's kind of a stupid uh, question because we're all, we're all part of uh, this kind of land of cinema and uh, we, we, we participate. Uh, in, in, in cinema in, in, in more of a global sense nowadays, film is a global phenomenon. But within the national cinema, what, what, what place do you see yourself? Dentro del cine español, como... Bueno, dentro del cine español siempre se me ha tratado como un tipo raro, ¿no? Y incluso es lo que se llama un cineasta maldito y un poco perverso y la gente se ha imaginado cosas muy extrañas sobre mí y mi trabajo ha sido muy desigual he tenido hecho cosas personales y al mismo tiempo he tenido que hacer cosas de encargo y con espacios muy grandes sin trabajar en medio well I've always been considered some kind of a strange guy within Spanish cinema they've even called me um, uh, <laughs> Maldito. Uh, Maldit, I think. He's like a poet, Maldit, uh, Maldit cin cin cinematographer. And even they've called me a perverted director. Really, I'm always being seen as very strange. And my work is, uh, is very different between, among it itself. My, my films are not really one uh, they are not all the same. Um, maybe we could talk about, and this is this is a question that uh, is very uh, is related to kind of the the traumatic history of of fascism in Spain. And I think all of the Spanish filmmakers carry this with them, this sort of heavy baggage of the of Franquismo, uh, and uh, and and the way that you work with it in your films is, I would say, is very visceral, very very exciting. Uh, I'm not interested at all in with the uh, fr Frankismo. 
this part of the um, of the history in Spain. Um, I use sometimes, two or three times, the civil war as a background for to tell another things. I'm very interested in the in the when you lost the innocence in, in the children. And, pr and normally they are associated with the war and the consequences of the war. This is this is that I interested, not exactly in the uh, in the uh, bellic uh, uh, the war as, uh, or the ideology. This is the thing. I try to speak in English because. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk about let's go back to Trasel Cristal. Uh, I, I mean, for for you, this is this is your first major film out of the bag, and uh, and and how was how was the reception for you, and then how was it afterwards? <laughs> this 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 film uh, it, it appears in in Berlin, and the first time I remember they want to beat me. <laughs> People was afraid with this film and. I was a little bit um, astonished because I thought I was made a, a, s a love story, <laughs> but of course it's not a love story because it's a very dramatic thing. I don't know if, if you are seeing this movie, but this movie is about uh, the, um, the, the clinic experiments with children in the, um, whole in the um, concentration camp. And the, this is very uh, strong, of course, but I was interested in the relation between the um, Victim, my verdugo. Um, victim um, between um, the, the, criminal and the criminal and uh, <laughs> his and his victim. And um, it was uh, in Spain. This film was um, amazing. It, it was not normal to do a film like this in the, in this in nineteen uh, twenty five years ago. No, and uh, and that's all. <laughs> In the next film, El Niño de la Luna, uh, in 1989, this was a film with a bigger budget. Uh, it was a film that uh, was going to open in all the cinemas. And, uh, and so tell us about the, the challenges no. of that. After the Nicholas case, most of the people, they say, me, you are crazy, you are all of uh, <laughs> bad things. <laughs> and I try to make a thing more lum uh, lumin uh, with more light, easier, f uh, like a tale. I try to do in Moonchild. It's inspired in a book of uh, Aleister Crowley, he's a magician. But the film is very strange. It's a little bit esoteric. I don't know. It's uh, it's inclassificable. I don't know where to put this this, this kind of film. Uh, th this film was a uh, It was a failure. <laughs> it was not success at all. He was in Cannes in competition, but it was a film strange. Mm. And after that, <laughs> I used seven years without work. I tried to make a very nice movie. I thought it was a very nice movie. It's an adaptation of a woman, writer woman in Spain. I, the film was, um, was to be Death on the Spring, and I never could make this movie. And I lost my money, I lost my situation, <laughs> reputation, all, and during seven years. But maybe, okay, so there's the period between 1989 and 1995 of the El Pasajer Clandestí. Um, and uh, situate us within the, the, the maybe we, we don't want to talk too much about the politics of the Spanish film industry, but what, what does one do when one is not working? Are you writing? Are you... Uh I was cooking, cooking <laughs> cakes. <laughs> I was cooking cakes during a uh, time. And uh, sometimes I try to do uh, small documentaries, but small documentaries about museums or tourists, uh, very just to it. And when I arrive, uh, the Passager Clandestin, it's, it's, uh, it's a French film made with Arte, Arte TV. It's uh, an adaptation of Simenon. I didn't like a lot uh, this project. But uh, it was uh, fantastic for me to do this film because it, it permits me it, uh, it's be able to continue making movies after that. And, and is it true, for example, that you, you maybe you can find more money to in Spain to make films about Spanish subjects and Spanish history and rather than, let's say, going a bit outside of that? Have you found that that has limited your work or has it been an interesting uh, challenge in your work? 
pero mm, mm. si has encontrado que es más fácil en conseguir dinero para en España, si la temática es, es española. Sí. Uh, ok. Uh, probably yes, probably it's easier. N not the thematic Spanish. If you use a book, especially if you use a book, it has a success. Then it's easier because the producer, they risk um, more easy. It's more easy the risk. Um, but I don't know. Eh? I don't know because I make a very different things, and sometimes it's very difficult, and sometimes no. That depends. Well, let's talk about, for example, a film like uh, Aro Tol Tolbukin, si. which uh, is a film that is a hybrid film. It, it's taking on many different uh, forms and, yes. uh, and shot in different formats. And, yeah. uh, and I, I, so, so that's another... Ri suddenly you've made these, these films, maybe a few projects that were more, uh, one could say, conventional, and then yeah. you go back to a more experimental form. Oh, of course. Yeah. We start to... We are three directors in this film. Lydia Zimmerman is Agracin, one is from Canada, the other is from Switzerland, and me. And we started to, to make a movie, and the, 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 the main idea was the, the love to them, the cinema. And we use all of kind of, um, uh, of say, um, 35 super weight millimeters, uh, video, um, and w w at the same time, we use, for example, the, um, the language of the films in the 1940, and uh, with, um, with some, something um, I, um, pro more prose to the dogma, for example. And the story is, is just to, in the archaeology, there is um, parts of uh, different parts to go to the past. No? And this is the same. We, we, had, we have a story, it's a story of a serial killer, but at the same time we go to the movies looking to the cinema like an archaeological um, way. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you speak very well. Um, you know, it seems like the, there, are, there are certain film models that you, 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 you might be following, maybe not. El Mar is a very classically told film yeah. in a certain way. In other ways it's not. Um, but maybe you could talk explicitly about what some of those models are for you, those, those influences, because if you're, if you're dealing expressly with the materiality of cinema, it's one thing. Maybe you're looking at more experimental filmmakers. If you're looking at more classical approach, you're looking at maybe Hollywood. So maybe you could say some of your uh, models. You asked me about my influence, yes. no? Uh, I think I am very, a lot, academic in the way to do the movies. But, pro but the, the, the different thing is the, the way th that use the, um, the, the topics, no? The, um, and normally they are one mis missing between the cruelty and the poetry. That's different and that makes the films strange, no? But uh, my influence, for example, I love Hitchcock. The, I think it's very important because I love the, the terror mo horror, horror movies and the fantastic. And all of this part, it was, is, I don't use th that for, to, to feel uh, fair, no? To, to, and I used to, in a w psychological way, I think that makes the special movies. Okay. Perhaps there's any questions from the audience that we could take. Yes, please. Oh, there's a, a microphone for you. What is your relation with animals? Because in El Mar you killed, well, some dog, I guess. A cat. There was a cat killed in El Mar. Now a horse. Some birds. My relation with the animals is very good. I have a cat. <laughs> a black cat. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, no say, I, I don't understand because in a lot of films you, you can kill a lot of people, for example, in the American films. Uh -huh. But when you kill a cat or you... <laughs> That's terrible, no? I think that sometimes it's important to see the cruelty of the things, because not for to provoke people, just for to understand what happens uh, after that. And I think it's important to... Um, to, to, to... You don't know eh, what I mean? It's for that, but I, I love the animals. Eh? <laughs> yes, more questions, please. Anyone? 
Well, I'd like to know a little bit more about um, how, how you kind of navigate. Now, Pa Negra, your last film, Black Bread, uh, has had a success in San Sebastián, uh, 100,000 spectators in Spain. Um, this must be a new kind of a new new feeling. Is it a, as if and and now it's going to be released in some other territories too? Um, does that work into your way of making films? I mean, d is this going to change you? Sí. I don't know. I don't have the habitude to connect with the public as as big as with this film with Black Bread, no, with Panegre. I don't know. Now I, I'm working. I'm working in a TV project with Argentina, Spain and Argentina. And just it's one, one year working. And after that, now I'm <laughs> all the people want to work with me. It never happens before. <laughs> but I want to, mm, to think how to continue. I don't want to be uh, in, in ex the it, exit successful. I don't like that. I, I want to, uh, I need to think. But does that mean making a smaller cinema? I don't know, see, probably. I prefer to make films is um, ne very near to me, and I don't like when the film, it, it, be, it becomes something, uh, something bigger than you, I don't know, as, as the, you are in the, in the mouth of a lot of people, your work is there, and I, mm, I don't, I don't know. Huh? I'm confused yet. Mm. But I mean, uh, would, would the next step, for example, be say taking a video camera and ma making something more essayistic? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, because I don't have to use the video camera. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I need to. to uh, I think it's very important. In the always, people say the same themes, but it's true. Uh, the team. People who work with you is very, very important. I don't want to do nothing alone. No, I, you need these people. Well, let's talk about the the aspect of collaboration in your films. You mm. work with uh, a lot of the same technicians, and uh, uh, what in, in in what sense is that kind of informing this this approach? This uh, kind of hands a little bit hands off, and how do you see that reflected in the films themselves? Uh, I don't know. Some of them. Uh, we started to work together in the short films years, years ago. Uh, for example, the director of photography, musician, the, um, uh, but, uh, no sé, we work, uh, it's, it's a normal world to work. We, we know how, how we are looking at each one, and, and that's all, huh? it's not very complicated. Well, you see a lot of directors, a lot of young Spanish directors now really just taking the camera on their own, going out. Isaki La Cuesta, for example, will take a camera and go st or do a video project with Orgarin, will take f still photographs and make a video essay and things like this. I mean, in, in a way, it's in your filmography, you see experimental examples in hybrid forms. So you see that there is some kind of inclination on your part to explore maybe a more handmade type of thing. I mean, uh, I mean, also, yeah. also because of the I difficulty of financing. Of probably, yeah. I don't know, but for example, I love that work of uh, Gerin, Isaki, uh, and Jordan. There is, uh, in Catalonia, there's fantastic people who work as a documentary, but they go far away in another. But uh, I don't know how, how to do that. I'm, uh, I'm trying to tell a story in, an, in a normal. Um, it's very, it's very normal. That I, it's very academic. That, that's what I like to to explain. It's not for me to investigate or to be experiment. I don't feel I am a I, I, I don't feel. Well, I, I don't feel like your work is academic. <laughs> I really <laughs> <Thank> don't. <you. laughs> well, no, maybe it's not academic, but you know what I mean. It's, um, I don't want to crush anything to make something new. No, it's not my idea. Well, a retrospective like this kind of affords you the opportunity to look back at your work hmm. and to see different things, possibly. A lot of directors don't like retrospectives because they say, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> see, I don't know, because I think it's my first retrospective. No, no, there's one in New York last month, but it's, uh, during 30 years I'm making movies. This is the first time that uh, I, can, I can remember they have 
a lot of films of my myself, no. Mm. But what is it, what does it mean for you? I mean, what do you what? What well, I, the meaning of the retrospective? No, no, but uh, uh, the, the the opportunity, let's say, to talk about your work again. Yeah, nothing. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not finished, of course. No, I, I hope so. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience, please? Yes. Yes, uh, I have a question because at the beginning you said that um, you feel um, that in the Spanish cinema you are considered as a director maldito, you said. And do you think now that uh, with the 14 nominations that you have for the Goya prizes, do you think this may be a kind of uh, that the Spanish cinema is making the peace with you or? Okay. These 14 nominations that you mean in the it's awards of the Academy of Spain, that's ch ch it's, 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 no say, it's a surprise for all the people, for me of course, and for uh, a lot of people. <laughs> um, but I think this is the, um, is the, the, the film, Panegra, I, feel, I think this film, it, I don't know why, they go to the, the audience and they has a, he, he has won a place, no? His people like this movie, and I probably I imagine this because the characters of the of the main roles are very pro, um, very clo uh, closely to the heart of the people. They co they can um, say them connect easy in a in, in a in an easy way, and I don't know what happens after that. that I think that doesn't mean that the the. Um, the idea of, of the Spanish um, cinema is changing, no? I think it's changing every day, it's changing, of course. And I don't know, it changes a lot for me. Just to call me and say, you want to make a film or all of this thing, but um, nothing more. Huh? I think there is one or two months more um, noises, and that's all. Hmm. But maybe this signals or points towards a, a real change in Spanish cinema, I think. Uh, at least I see it. At least when the time, let's say, when you started making films and in the mid-90s, a lot of these films weren't available for people to see. You had to go to specific cinema tech or a, a, a small festival. And now this seems they circulate, they're out there. We can c kind of begin to comp compare you and put you into context with the other directors that we've mentioned, for example. I think it's changing, and I think they're changing for the better. See, but, see, but, see, but it's not true, eh? Because the other films, no. <laughs> Uh, today will be in a in a small uh, uh, in a small place again. Eh? This is, I think it's Black Bread or pa Panegra. It's a special thing. This is a, a main film, no sense. But for example, the films of Guerino, of Isaki, they are in a small, uh, uh, you know. And probably my next film will be again in a small place. Yeah, but we in in a way we've ex sort of expanded in the global sense. I, no, I yeah. think that the choice has changed uh, in the Spanish movies. There is a, a very different things now. Uh, a, a, a lot of uh, very, very different. It's like a uh, with different things. Yeah, May I ask you something? Yes, um, please. Do you long to be small again? Are you longing to be go back to small smaller things instead of this big? Huge thing. Ah, pequeño y desconocido. Ah, Mira, I don't know, huh? <laughs> sí. No, because uh, I, 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 the, the thing that I, I love most is make movies. That's the most important. But what you need money, a lot of money sometimes, and this is. Um, a relation you must uh, to be a, a te to pay attention to this relation between money and you, and your work and that is the audience that's that's sure. But I would like to to have como uh, artesanales uh, the movies artisanal movies see sí, more uh, more in, involved not not uh, see sí, sí. But this will give you the opportunity to 
this will give you the opportunity to find money maybe sí. more easily. Probably, mm -hmm. Pro probably. Mm. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a question about uh, you, you acting and you seeing yourself in front of the camera and behind the camera because in Tras el Cristal, for example, you're an actor. No, 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 uh, no in El, el Niño del... No, no. No, in, in, in other films. In a, in, in, oh, in the, in the shorts, in the early shorts, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and sort of, the, you know, this is... How, how do you... Well, in being in front of the camera, being behind the camera, you have to always f find a perspective. Uh, how do you how do you find that you manage to say I with the camera, or how do you how do you manage I that? I think I I started to work in movies uh, as an actor. First of all, in theater when I was 17 or 18 years old, and, and during some years I was uh, I, I worked as an actor, first in theater, after in movies, and the most important thing I, I was a bad actor. No, no. <laughs> But the most important is I, 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 understand, I, I understood how is the way to work an actor. And now, when I work uh, in a movie, it's very easy for me to, um, to make a connection with the actors. And the actors, for me, is the most important thing in a film. Because it's the only the, this thing is alive when you are shooting. Because the other things you are told with the um, cost, the, habit, the costumes, with the things where you have made uh, pl um, the, pl the shooting, all these things. But the actor, his eyes, his feelings, they are alive there. And it's very important to, um, I think it's the most important in a movie. And you don't want to go back to acting? No, no, but <laughs> the young people, <laughs> They call me again uh, sometimes to make movies, but always they are, the roles are a monster or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and I do these films. You so, do? So, see, see, see. Yeah. I make um, one film is the um, adaptation of um, the, star, the Turn of a Crew. It's a film with Javi Cattell or in Bacal. I make the ghost, the, the ghost. <laughs> And another film is El Habitante Incierto, Guillermo Morales, he's a young director in Spanish. Uh, he makes, uh, there is a, a man who, who goes to an, in a house and it, it goes to, he asks for to call, a phone, to make a phone call and disappears. And all the time she's in the house and the other is afraid about this, this figure, no? And that's... <laughs> Yes. Con su permiso, le voy a tirar dos preguntas en español. Primero me lo traduzco después para que usted tenga tiempo para digestar esto. Entonces la primera es, ¿cómo ha sido la prehistoria de esta película? ¿Cómo ha surgido la idea, un material dramaturgo? ¿De cuál película? De, de, de esta, la que vimos ahora, eh, Pan Negra. Eh, entonces, ¿Cómo ha surgido la idea? ¿Cuál fue la historia? Porque es un material eh, muy dramatúrgico, muy acentuado, casi clásico, muy, muy, muy hondo. Y la segunda es, ¿cómo ha sido trabajar por una parte con un gigante, como un monumento vivo, como Sergio López, eh, ya en, en, cuando filmando, filmando, aquí tenemos al director, y por otra parte con este chico brillante como como protagonista, ¿cuáles fue, bueno, anécdotas, cómo ha sido explicar, cómo reaccionaban? Gracias. Uh, my question was first, uh, uh, to extend a little bit about the idea of the film that we've seen now, and, and the other was, how was it to, to, to work on one, on one hand with such a, a great artist like uh, Sergio Lopez, and on the other hand with this beautiful boy that we saw as a protagonist of the film? Thank you. Yeah. Gracias. Bueno, uh, th this film, when the producer, this is a woman, she comes to me with a, a, a book, uh, Pan Negra. And I have, the, I have a dinner with her and uh, the, the writer, and I, I, I was not sure to, um, to make this movie, to make a movie, because there is, all, because there is a lot of films about the civil war with a child in the Spain, no? and I thought maybe it's, it's, people are tired about these kind of stories. But there is something inside um, that I think is possible to do something different, interesting, is, just in the way because during the Franco, during the Franco, uh, we can uh, people was very silent a lot of things, no. And when it, when we start, we we can 
Todo, eh, voy, a, eh, os voy a hablar en, en, en español un momentito. Pero durante un tiempo, las películas que se hacían, como había tanto, veo tanto, tanta represión, eran muy paternalistas hacia los republicanos, hacia la izquierda. During some time, for some time, uh, one couldn't really speak out in Spain, and uh, the films that were made were extremely paternalistic, and that was the way you had to make films about the Republicans. Sí, ya, ya, y sin embargo, ahora permitía hacer que el, no hacer ideológicamente, no hablar, de, decir, ver, a ver. I try to speak in English, that because uh, no, no, because it's important. A ver, mm. you can talk about the um, the, um, po the the po poverty and all of these things, but the morality, the, the ideals of the persons, that is the worst in the war. That's the the, the meaning of, of of all the film. I want to talk about that. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, doesn't importa if you are for, uh, Republican or you are uh, fascist. Uh, it doesn't matter. The war is like a stone in a in a sheet. They, all the people, uh, are in this side on the other side. All the people is is it's, it's, it hurts out all the people. And that uh, that I'm interested in to talk about that. And about Sergi López, Sergi López is a fantastic man. He's always funny. <laughs> I was a little bit impressed about him because I didn't know before. Huh? And I said, do you want to make this, this short, uh, short role in a film? And he said, yes, immediately. And the boy was fantastic. The boy and the little girl also. Because we, we find these, these children in, um, in, in, the, in the village. They are not from the city, they are from a village. There's a special way to, to look. They are more, how do you say? They are special, they are different. And we work during, during two months with a coach, of course, um, and they start to, how do you say, to, to learn how to be an actor. And they make a, a beautiful work, I think. Mm. Okay, any, we have to, do we have time for maybe one more? Just one, maybe short, final question, if anyone has anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Then I think we can take a break, eat a bocadillo, and uh, thank you very much uh, to Agusti Villaronga. Please come see films.